have our students here performing or you know, testifying, like later on we'll hear from the Maplewood High School ambassadors. Those are really the best parts of our meeting because they actually show what we do on a daily basis and that doesn't often make the media, but it's the best part of what goes on in our schools. And so that was, um, that was an amazing performance that we just had. We will, um, we have a quorum here tonight, yay. And we will have the pledge, if I could get, um, I think I saw her walk in, Ms. Michelle Sheriff to come lead us in the pledge tonight from MNEA. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Michelle. <clears throat> Um, so we will move on to the portion of our agenda that is, and the good news is, and first of all, we'll hear from the Maplewood High School ambassadors. Are they here with us tonight? Good. Good evening, everyone. I am Sonya Brooks, the principal of Maplewood High School, and we have three of our students here tonight, Danya Hamadi, Rayvon Collins, and Joshua Hawkins, and they are here to speak with you on the good news at Maplewood, and at this time, I'm going to turn it over to them. My name is Rayvon Collins. I am a junior and attending Maplewood. I'm the junior class vice president. Good evening, everyone. My name is Donnie Hilmati. I'm in the Academy of Health and Electrical Sciences. I'm a junior. And my, my pathway is therapeutic services. Good evening. My name is Joshua Hawkins. I am a senior at Maplewood High School. Uh, I am the senior class president. And my academy is entrepreneurship and innovation. First thing we'd like to say is thank you for having us here tonight. We appreciate it. Um, my plans after high school would be to major in business with a concentration of hospitality, to minor in law, and pursue a doctrine in theology. Brutus. When I graduate from Maplewood, I will go to Belmont University and major in biochemistry with a minor in pre-dentistry. What I plan on doing after high school is get majoring in agric agricultural business and minoring in finance. So the first thing I like to say about Maplewood is Maplewood, we have our good days and we have our bad days, just like <laughs> any other high school. Really? And when you walk through the halls of Maplewood, people think that there's this going on, there's that going on, but we do have our good aspects of how you can look at Maplewood. One, we have a, a program where you can get offered a full ride scholarship to Belmont. So that's pretty decent if you're willing to go to college after school because a lot of kids, a lot of students, excuse me, aren't going to go to college after high school, but that's all right. There's always different career fields they can enter. When I first moved here to Nashville, uh, I didn't know that there was a waiting list for schools, so Maplewood was the first school open, and my dad was like, you can come to Maplewood for a few weeks until we get you into a magnet school, and then you can leave, and after a week, I, I told my dad, I don't want to leave Maplewood, and he said, really? I said, yeah, I don't want to leave, and I said, there are, there are so many good programs in the school in my academy, you can get you can get your CCMA. You can be a medical assistant right when you get out of high school. I said, like that's possible. They said, yeah. And right now, we're getting CPR certified in class during school. Like, what other schools have that? But we do have our like bad days. So. <laughs> Every, every school has that, and with Maplewood, we have our teachers, the teachers that are with us, they put their everything into the students, but we still have vacancies, and with those vacancies, when we have substitutes, the students think they have a chance to 
roam the halls or not be in class and participate. And when that happens, it distracts other kids from that want to get their education from concentrating in class. And when that happens, when we when we do have a teacher in class, the most sometimes there'll be 35 kids or more in a class and the teacher's busy trying to keep those kids in the class instead of teaching. So it, it just causes chaos and th no one is able to do their job. The students can't learn, the teachers can't teach. But I just really love the teachers that are here and do wanna help us and get to our goals. They're, they actually care and they love their jobs. And last but not least, Ms. Brooks, she came here and she set structure to the school and some kids don't like that and that's why they'll be like, oh, we don't like the dress code or we don't want Ms. Brooks to be our principal of our school, but I'm like, you don't like what she's doing because you don't like the structure that's being set in the school to make things better. Um, <clears throat> piggybacking on what they said, uh, we have our trials and tribulations. Every day is not always going to be a good day, but then also at the same time, you also got to focus on your, your good times. Um, like she was, I moved up here two and a half years ago, not knowing anything about academies or schools. And of course, I heard things about Maplewood, but I was like, I just wanted to see it for myself. So I moved, I moved up here, came to Maplewood, and I seen it for myself, and I was like, okay, cool. I give it a couple of weeks, and I ended up staying only because I just felt like you should be the change that you want to see. So if you have a school that you know is not the perfect, not the best be a part of it and change it to be the perfect and the best. Um, we have amazing teachers, we have amazing students. You are gonna have those students that don't, you know, of course, follow directions like any other school. Um, we have tons of opportunities that I was not offered when I was, before I moved up here, such as the dual credit that we have in entrepreneurship innovation, which is also preparing you for college to get that credit. Um, Ms. Brooks came to Maplewood and she, like she said, set the structure and she changed it. Some people are not going to like it because they're not used to seeing change in the school that's positive and in a good way. Um, one of the programs we offer at Maplewood that help that good portion of students reach their full potential. Don't mistaken that we don't pay attention to the students that don't do so well, but we do have to make sure each section of the school, good students or bad students, are satisfied. They make sure they come in, learn, whether they act up or not, because all students matter. And so a program we have to help <coughs> certain students achieve the highest goals, um, we have the Abbott program. That's a big step in making sure students get to college, getting the college exposure they need, even when they don't know anything about college. When students enter this program, it's a whole different atmosphere. You know, you go from, you have your honors classes, you have your standard classes, and you have AVID. AVID is a whole nother ball game. Taking Cornell notes, taking college trips, anybody can do that. But the way AVID does it, she, we make, they make sure that you're on task, they make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to do. Any teacher can say, hey, are your grades good? But the way AV is going to do it, they're going to make sure your grades are acceptable to where you can enter any college you desire. Is that it? Yeah. So like I said, Maplewood has a lot of programs. And I know that for sure, because when I was in New York, our schools, in our districts, the schools would compete in who's the best, like the actual school itself, not the students. They, a few months ago, they renovated the half of the school for $15 million for just a section of it, but they don't, that money they could have used to put programs in the school to have the students when they graduate, but no. And here, they say Maplewood needs more money. Yeah, but look at all these programs that we do have that help the students. You can, we have dual enrollment, you can get college credit, there's just, so many things that Maplewood does have and people don't look at that side. Like they just see the things that are posted on social media, but that's not all to Maplewood. 
again, to piggyback on what she said, um, I feel like Maplewood is depicted by people who don't come into school and actually see it for themselves. Um, Maplewood has a lot of opportunities, which is another reason why I chose Maplewood. They have multiple opportunities for you. Um, just happened, I'm in the AVID program. AVID program has completely, pretty much changed my whole life. Um, I've recently got accepted to Alabama a and which we went on a college tour there. Um, I am a Dell Scholarship, Dell Scholar final, semi-finalist. A lot of opportunities at Maplewood, and I encourage people when they ask me, do you think I should go to Maplewood? I just feel like what you see on social media is not what you see in reality. So you should just come in to Maplewood and see about it for yourself. With Maplewood, we have a, a range of students. We have a range of students. We have students that should be placed in AP classes, advanced placement, and we have kids that need to be taking remedial classes. And when you have kids from those two groups in the same class, it really doesn't help anyone in that class. It doesn't help the teacher, it doesn't help the students. And when that, hap that happens a lot, in our school, that's what I notice, and it does, it does, it doesn't help the kids that want to get their education. It doesn't help the teacher or the students, and I just. So before we take our seats, are there any more questions? <laughs> no. Y'all have done a marvelous job. Thank you for um, sharing with us your opportunities that you have um, been exposed to at Maplewood High School. We do appreciate that. I'd like to give the opportunity for your principal, Ms. Brooks, to come say a couple of words, if she's so inclined. <laughs> Thank you again for the opportunity to have us here. Uh, we're really excited. Um, I will tell you, we're off to an amazing 2020 school year. Uh, as our students say, we have our good days, we have our bad days, but we must ride on the good and move forward, and uh, we're excited to put things in place to ensure that our students are successful. I appreciate all the support that we're receiving from our community, um, as well as the teachers that we are having the beating in, in the building. Um, again, we're taking one day at a time, um, and ensuring that all of our students, every last one of them, are successful. And, and thank you again for having us here tonight. Thank you, Ms. Brooks. Yes. I appreciate that. Earlier, uh, I said one more thing. Sure. I'm sorry. When you enter the room, you have a special gift on behalf of Maplewood High School and the Schools of Innovation, and we, we want to say thank you. Oh, thank all you right. very mm -hmm. much. Thank you. Earlier we heard from the MLK uh, Manor School, they had their uh, French horn quartet here. If Christian Bugs would like to say anything about that. Sure. No, you do want to take a picture with the Maplewood Ambassadors. Yeah, 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 I forgot that. about that. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Maplewood Ambassadors, would you all mind coming up for a picture? I always forget. Bugs? Thank you. So this evening we had the pleasure of hearing from the, uh, the Martin Luther King Jr. Academic Magnet High School at Pearl High Horn Ensemble, which was uh, composed of Ben Coates, Ms. Carrington Caps, Marlene Samuels, and Parwan Machingal. Uh, they were instructed by Ms. Kristen Bowers with band directors John Womack and Ian Nicholson. Uh, their program, they played I'm Walled in the Forest by Felix Mendelssohn. It's a short hunting horn time piece, type piece. One student may, never mind, that wasn't supposed to read that. And they also <laughs> played a hunting chorus for Der Freitschitz by C.M. von Weber, arranged by Hans Liebert. Thank you. That's all I got. Thank you, Ms. So, it took a lot. It took a lot. 
Okay, Ms. Player, P Player Peters, would you like to talk about the artwork? Um, yes, if you look on the table over there um, against the wall, um, we have tonight's artwork showcases Winterscapes. Second grade students from Norman Brinkley create a set of papers using liquid watercolors and then use them to make um, a winter wonderland forest appropriate for the season. Um, their art teacher is Ms. Uh, Ms. Janet Malone, so we'd like to thank him for the artwork. Uh, next, we'll move on to our awards and recognitions portion of our program. And first on the list is uh, Mr. 3A Football, Mr. James Moore from Stratford High School. Dr. Battle. All right, James, if you can come on up to the podium. You're not here. Right there. Oh. Hummer. Did we miss James today? Okay. We'll follow up with James. He's okay. not here with us this evening. Okay, evening. we'll move on to the next one then. All right, Mr. Derek Rowe, you can come on up to the podium. So this evening, we would like to recognize one of our great teachers, Mr. Derek Rowe, the aviation flight teacher at McGavick High School. We're so proud of him. Um, he's a part of our career and technical education program. Mr. Rowe was awarded a $50,000 prize in the Harbor Freight Tools for school school's prize for teaching excellence. Mr. Rowe is a helicopter pilot who comes to us with 30 years of experience in aviation. He was a pilot in the British Army for 17 years, and he also spent part of his professional life as an EMT. Mr. Rowe is a dedicated teacher who emphasizes the importance of real world hands-on experiences with his students daily. His teaching excellence is exemplified by the successes and enthusiasm of his students. Students in the aviation pathway at McGavick are part of something unique within MMPS and across Tennessee. In the classroom, they are restoring a World War II aircraft, building a flight-worthy plane, and using simulators to practice their piloting skills. Outside the school building, students have the opportunity to intern at Southwest Airlines, have been a part of pit crews for air races, and some are even working on their private pilot's license. We are so thankful to Mr. Rowe for his dedication to the students at McGavick High School, and we're excited to see what the future of the aviation program holds. Congratulations, Mr. Rowe, on receiving this award. It is truly well deserved. So I did have a whole speech prepared, but you said it all. <laughs> um, we've also had another little um, um, gift from American Airlines over the past week, which was another $25,000 into the, into the program. Um, what we intend to do with the Harbor Freight money and that money is to take, the plan is to take all my students to DC, to the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. Wow. As, uh, as uh, inspiration, because that's what the money was for, uh, to inspire youth into aviation. Um, apart from that, I'd like to thank you for welcoming me here, and uh, it is an honor to be here. And I'm supported tonight by Mr. Johnson, um, our Dean of uh, Academy Dean, and of course my champion, Donna Gilly, who <laughs> um, without her I don't think I would have succeeded at all. She's brilliant. But thank you anyway, and uh, thank you as well. Hey. Picture.
guys are so good on Soul Jerk. I had the opportunity to be present at the school when we surprised Mr. Rowe with, his, with this award. There were only 18 uh, instructors across the United States who received this prestigious award. And we had several of the students there in the audience. And I have to say there that they are a very diverse group of students that um, are in this academy. They have um, every nationality represented at McGavick High School. They have, I think, an equal balance between female and, and male participants in this academy. Um, the fact that students clamor to get into this particular, the, his classrooms, I think, speaks volumes as to the type of teacher he is. So I'm, I'm really um, grateful that he did receive this recognition. All right, um, next the board will move into public participation. Are we gonna see the names on the board? We should see uh, the names on the TV screens and as you see your name, please come to the front of the room to the podium please and the board will hear from these persons who have requested to appear at this board meeting in the interest of time, uh, speakers are requested to limit their remarks to three minutes or less, and we will time uh, your comments. So, um, I don't see any names, but the first person on my list is uh, TJ Williams. Yes, you my name? Yes, you did. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> uh, happy 2020. Indeed. And uh, I spoke to you all about a year ago and I told you, and I'm gonna tell you the same thing, I probably won't have a job when I get through tonight, but I am who I am and I stand for what I stand for, and that is our children. Next of all, my colleagues, and then of course I love y'all, and I wanna say to the Board of Education, you all get blamed for a lot of stuff that you don't even know about, that you don't say about. <laughs> now, when people like me, and I'm standing in the gap for some bereaved parents tonight, some people in the community that talked to me, there were some students that were coming, but their parents asked that they not come because they thought the kids would be retaliated against, all this bum foolery has got to stop. Everybody should have a right to come to the Board of Education and talk and talk about what's on their heart. The only way you can fix it is that you know about it. There's a lot of things you don't know about, and interim director, um, Dr. Battle, there's a lot of things you don't know about. And when you know about it, it's too late. So what I'm gonna say is, you heard the stu some of the students, and I noticed that all the board meetings I come to, it's always ambassadors. There are some other students out there that exist that are not ambassadors and you need to hear from them. But on, on this, at this time right here, I'm gonna say a couple of things. Nepotism, cronyism, jealousy and deceit has gotta stop. It's destroying the entire Board of Education. So if it destroys here, it just trickles down. And until some of these behaviors are stopped, where principals feel like they're intimidated, and when you come to a meeting and you say, how's your school, everything's great, because you're scared to tell that everything is not great. You talk to the teachers and they say, I can't come because I'm trying to get a promotion or they're gonna retaliate. I don't care about retaliation. I'm saying, I was asked to ask you all, are you for Maplewood or against us? We're in the bottom, pretty close probably to state takeover. Uh, Dr. Griffin's done a great job. She's come and supported, but she can't do it on her own. Everybody's gonna have to get on this train and not just get Maplewood, but I'm speaking because I'm in Maplewood. I already heard you're not gonna have your job next year. Pad my file, reverse my um, evaluations, all that's fine. My thing is that students are successful. We work for the students. And all this other bum foolery has got to stop. We've got a big teacher turnover. I, for the first time in 12 years, don't have a complete automotive class. I was given a senior capstone, and I guess I was supposed to get mad, but guess what, they're all kids. I can teach it, I can reach it and teach it, and preach it. So I found out that out of the 26 students, 10 of them were not on task to graduate. So they didn't have English teachers, and they don't have one now because the teacher quit. So I got a hold of our literacy coach who quit, and asked her to put some English in Schoology so the kids could at least do some English and it would put the grade in there so if the teacher came, they could look in Schoology and get the grade. Well, we're back to ground zero 
And we've got students that are getting ready to graduate in May, and they're wondering, I'm supposed to ask you all again, board, are you for Maplewood or against Maplewood, and do you care about the turnover, and do you care about the leadership in the building? And if we're on the bottom, do you want to turn us over to state takeover, or what really is going on? I hope that you're for us, because it's about the kids. And I'm asking, I know you all have your own areas. You all, each one of y'all need to come. Come unannounced. If you come announce, there's a show put on any school you go to. And like the kids said, all schools have problems, but we got problems. Can't put a Band-Aid on it. Thank you for the bill. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next on the list is uh, Dominique Hockett. Did it go away? Okay. Is Dominique here tonight? Going once, twice? I think that's right. Well, that's a good question right there. We're having issues apparently with our technology. It should be S E R D A R I O N, Sedarian Bell. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. Hi. Um, my name is Sedarian Bell. I go to Maplewood High School. I am in the automotive program and entrepreneurship innovation part of the school and again like they said we do have our good days and our bad days but today exactly was a bad day um today we had nine fights in the hallway and our principal was nowhere to be found um I'm not trying to down her or anything on her job or anything it's just she wasn't nowhere to be found and we just I, I don't feel safe walking around my school because I, I just feel like any, any time I play, somebody could jump out and hit me. Somebody could do something to me. And it's not just about our principal. It's about our administration, too. We don't have a good administration. We don't have enough protection in that school for us to walk around the hallway like nothing's wrong. Um, I am actually, I'm on track to graduate. And I actually work at Firestone, too, also on top of that, which is a great opportunity that we have at our school. Amazing opportunity. It's just our school is, is going down. And we, we're trying to, we've talked to our principal about what the teachers have said to us, because the teachers have said pretty horrifying things to us, as in like, you're, you might as well go ahead and put graduation off. We've talked to her about those things, and we have yet to solve any of those. Um, talked to, talk to the principal about a couple things. Actually, she told me not to tell y'all anything because about the school would come to her first. So, and I've came to her many a times, and I've tried not to come to y'all about it, but as of right now, it's one of those times that we, I have to come to y'all about it because nothing is happening, nothing is changing. So I just thought I'd just let you know. Thank you. <laughs> Kelly Watlington, is Kelly here tonight? Thank you very much for her. Daniel Lopez. No, Daniel. Alexander Bahara. Am I working on a current list or not? I am? Okay. Right list. All right. Fatima. Is Fatima here tonight? Sorry, Fatima. I don't think I, I think I murdered your last name. Will you put that list back up there that you had up there before? The next name I have is Jacob Newman. I don't even have that name. Nope. Okay, good evening. My name is Jacob Newman. I go to Maplewood High School. I'm a junior. Um, I'm in an automotive program with Ms. TJ, amazing teacher. Uh, we've had, I've actually heard some teachers say bad things about her, trying to put her down, stuff like that. Um, I don't want my school to go down. On my diploma, I wanted to say Maplewood High School. I wanted to say I graduated in the Entrepreneurship and Innovation Academy. Um, in my academy, I love my academy. I have so many opportunities. I'm employed at Firestone because of Ms. TJ. Um, our, our administration has a little downfall. It hasn't been as good as it has been in my past two years. I would say this year is a little different. We have our bad days. We have our good days. I could walk into school tomorrow, and our school could be perfectly fine. I could enjoy my day. All the teachers are amazing. Then the next day, I could come in, everybody's in a bad mood, doesn't make me feel the way that I could be in a school. So in, in my school, I would love to see my school turned around. Um, I would like to see administration come back to the way it used to be in my past years. Um, 
my school, I just, I want it to be better the way it is now. It's just, it doesn't seem like a school. It doesn't seem like a school I would want to be in. It doesn't seem like a school I would want to stay to. But that's where I want to be because that's where I've been. So in my school, I would love to see the administration take charge. I would love to see the board help the administration take charge. I know Dr. Griffin has been in the school. I know she's come to help. I know um, other board members have as well, but I couldn't name them. Um, in my school, I would just love to see the change. I would love to see the help. We have our principal, uh, Ms. Brooks. She, she, I've had her before. She was the principal at Graymar. She was, she was a good principal then. I believe she could be a great principal now. Um, if she was to be a great principal, she would have to take the charge that's needed, turn the administration back to what it is, what it, it, what it used to be. I know change is good, but this change this year, people, fights have broken out multiple times around the year. Um, times, times have been tough, times have gotten better, and I know that she could change it for good or she could change it for the worse. And I don't want to see it change for the worse because that doesn't mean that our school is going to be the same. And if the way it's going, our teachers need to change as well. I don't think the teachers are focused on our academics. I think they should be more focused on academics. Uh, they're worried about students not being in class, not doing what they're supposed to, and they're leaving the children and students that are actually wanting to learn, just they're leaving them there. They're not doing anything about it. And that's what I would love to see as an administration and board, the board help our students that want to learn to learn. Some students are not on track, some students are. I would love to see everybody just come together and be one again and help out. And that would just be the way I would want to see my school change. Thank you. Jacqueline Nanny. Is Jacqueline Nanny here today? Good morning. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Good morning. My name is Jacqueline Nanny. Um, I'm an entrepreneurship innovation. I'm in an automotive class with Miss TJ. Um, so I would like to talk to you guys today about my school, Maplewood High School. Um, I feel like we could do better as a school. Like if we wouldn't have like teachers bring us down or administrators trying to fight other students, or if you wouldn't have like people like talk bad about the school, like. We I understand that we have good days and bad days, but I feel like like people always want to talk sugarcoat things. And like you shouldn't sugarcoat anything. Like it is what it is. This is what you see on a daily basis. I would say there's probably about over 300 fights. Um, we have teachers talk about kids and how they're not going to graduate and how they're not going to be successful in life and that they're either going to be locked up, dead, or gone. Like they're just going to be out of the world. Like, I feel like teachers shouldn't say that about students. Like, you should be able to talk good about your kids. Make sure you can graduate. Make sure you do everything that you can to help that child. And I feel like there is people that can change. And like I said, Maplewood is a good school. Like, we have great academies. Like, other schools don't have. And I feel like it's just best to, like, do better, have the school turn around, have people that wants to turn the school around, and then if you don't want to turn the school around, then you shouldn't be a part of something that is not. Mm -hmm. And then I also feel like you shouldn't be able, you should be able to walk or like through your hallways and feel like you're safe and shouldn't have to fight administrators or you shouldn't have to fight teachers or you shouldn't have to do anything because any and everybody should be able to walk through the hallways, get an education, and do what they want to do and be able to graduate and get a job and be successful. Like all you ladies here are successful. I know you guys had teachers that can help you, that did things for you. And like Missy J, like she helps her kids and there's other teachers that help their kids to make sure that they get what they need and make sure they get what they want. But like I said, it should be people that wants to help the school but I feel like if you get written up, it should also be in the system. Like, you shouldn't be able to get a referral and then don't be in the system at all because then that's getting counted on people days. Like, people get suspended and they don't be in the system and they be like, okay, well, your days is messed up. Well, it shouldn't be like it. And I feel like people should, like, like the school itself should get better. Like, you want to be in a school that you can walk to, go to class, say hi and bye, and be done. Like, you shouldn't be able to walk the halls and 
be like, okay, well, is they going to fight here and there? Or is you going to get your life together? Or is you not going to be able to graduate? Who do you have to find? Like, you have to find certain teachers that are willing to help, and that's not willing to help. There's teachers that are not willing to help. And then you got teachers that'll tell you, like, you're not going to graduate. You're not going to be this. You're not going to be that. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Tamara Huey. Is Tamara here tonight? Tamara Huey? No, Tamara? Okay. Tamara. 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 Sorry. Hello, how are y'all doing? Hey. <laughs> My name is Tamara Tuxon, and I'm representing uh, Whites Creek High School, and I'm an advocate for individuals with exceptional needs. I was also a public speaker, and this is my daughter, Mackenzie. I'll let, you, I'll let her introduce herself. My name is Mackenzie Tuxon. I am a fashion stylist for Stevie Rowe Jr. at Whites Creek High School. I am a third year varsity cheerleader, vice president of my sophomore and junior class, and a student ambassador at Whites Creek High School. I was the first student with different abilities to be inducted into the Honor Society. I am a member of the Student Impact Team for Education and Law. My greatest accomplishment is being this year's recipient of the Wesley Wright Student Advocate of the Year Award. I am passionate about advocating for students with exceptional needs. Well, we're here to talk about the success we've had at Whites Creek with the inclusion and transitioning. Two and a half years ago, we transitioned from Oliver Middle to Whites Creek High School. We had three things. We had three goals that we, we had three things that we were looking for when looking for a high school, and one was safety. Two was inclusion, and three, we wanted the opportunity for Mackenzie to try out for cheer, cheerleading. But Whites Creek has exceeded all of our expectations. Mackenzie has Rett syndrome, which is the most severe form of autism there is for a female. Her diagnosis states that she's not supposed to walk, she's not supposed to talk, she's supposed to be fed through a tube, and she's not supposed to have any purpose for hand movements. But we decided a long time ago we were not going to allow Rett syndrome to define us, we were going to define it. So what I want to tell you about is the way that this school has helped us and the other students that have exceptional needs. Mackenzie is all of the things that she just said. She's a cheerleader, an ambassador. She's, she's a, a vice president of her sophomore and junior class. But let me tell you something about the other students at the school. Last year, for the first time, there was a gentleman that ran for coming home, first one ever with exceptional needs. He won 80 to 10. Think about how long the school had been waiting to vote with, for someone with exceptional needs. The IP team and I came up with in, the team, may set a goal for Mackenzie to become an ambassador and started working on that her sophomore year. There are students there that are on the bowling team. There are students that are there in ROTC. There are students there that are on the drum line. When I tell you they are embracing inclusion, they are, and also helping their students to transition into the work world. I will be speaking at one of the largest transitions conference boop, boop. on the 27th of this month at the Music City Center, and they will feature White's Creek, the cheerleading squad, where Mackenzie's on. They will feature them on the screen. I'm a keynote parent speaker, so they will feature them there to let them know how the inclusion in the school system at White's Creek is working. Thank you. Thing. I wanted to leave y'all with a story. Uh, it's a kindred story that Vanderbilt did um, on Mackenzie, and it talks about her journey through high school and also talks about her right mm. to communicate. And I would also like mm. to thank my principal and my daughter's ancillary attendant. Our school would not be what it is today if it was not for Dr. Bailey. And her ancillary attendant, Miss Tabitha, helps us out greatly. She's her other mother in school, and I want to thank them. Thank you. For the opportunity. 
Mackenzie Tuxen? Is Mackenzie here? Oh, that was her. Okay, never mind. My bad. <laughs> Can they talk? Uh, never mind. That was us. Let me okay, this. gotcha. Just we, for a minute. Let me okay. just I want to say this. Richard McGovern? From Mackenzie to Cheer, oh. McKenzie to, from Mackenzie to Cheer, we make together, my, her dad and the teacher, make 200 signs for football and 200 signs for basketball for her to flip during the game. Oh, and God, that's God. her way of cheering because Mackenzie <laughs> is nonverbal. Oh, that's too awesome. cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she freaks his Hey, Ms. McGovern. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Dr. Battle and fellow board members. My name is Richard Montgomery. I'm in my 17th year of teaching in the district, and I'm currently an eighth grade social studies teacher at Johnson ALC. For those that aren't aware, Johnson is one of our schools that students have the option to attend if they're expelled from their home school. Teaching here definitely has its challenges. Coming in, I was assigned to teach middle school and high school PE and lifetime wellness. I knew this was going to be a big hill to climb since I've never taught in a middle or high school setting, but I had no idea what was truly ahead of me. While this is hard to hear, I'm cussed out daily, had my own personal children made fun of repeatedly, had items stolen from me, my vehicle's been vandalized, I've been spat on, bitten, and my life actually threatened. I've seen large group fights that took half of Metro PD to break up. I smell marijuana almost daily. I hear the Lord's name used in vain more in one day than in the whole rest of my life. I also see students that struggle with mental illnesses and traumas that would break most people. These students should be receiving as much, if not more, mental health, anger management, drug cessation, and grief counseling as they get academics. Not getting this is unfair to these students as well as the teachers that try so hard to teach them. On a personal note, as I said in the beginning, I've been teaching in this district for 17 years. I honestly love working with the youth. When I taught at the elementary level, I was always looked at in high regard by my students, their parents, and my administrators. Observation-wise, I've averaged a 3.43 on my observations and a LOE of 3.125 on the, over the first eight years of the team evaluation. We've always been told that a teacher getting a three was considered to be a rock solid teacher. Since I've came to Johnson, however, my confidence has taken a major hit. While I've been through several majorly difficult life events since I've been here, the most difficult is being left to feel like I'm a horrible teacher. In the middle of October, I was told that I would not be teaching PE, but instead I was needed to take over social studies and science for eighth grade. While the science part was eventually dropped, I've been teaching social studies ever since. As difficult as that was, just three weeks later, I was given a formal, unannounced observation as a social studies teacher. While I would knew I would not get the highest scores ever, I was beyond shocked and distraught when I saw the outcome. If you looked at the scores, you would have thought that I, the class had been taught by the worst teacher ever hired. It was difficult enough being asked to teach a subject that I knew nothing about, but to get a formal observation on this new subject only three weeks after starting this new assignment felt like such a slap in the face. After coming back to school after our winter break, I found out that because of those low scores, I've now been put on a plan of assistance. This plan basically gives me three months to become a top-notch social studies teacher, which, by the way, I never went to college for and have not gotten formal training in, or lose my teaching career, my retirement, my home, my belongings, and my dignity. I try really hard every day to make my way through this change. Thank you. Thank you. Abondo is our thing. Can I take double time because I don't speak good English. For respect to you, I'd like to somebody speak for me. Three minutes. Thank you for taking me again. Uh, buenas tardes. Gracias por permitirme regresar al board. El motivo por el cual estamos aquí es para preguntarles cómo es que la compañía Orion puede pagarnos o a quién más puedo dirigir mis palabras porque ellos aún no nos quieren pagar. Uh, cuando estuvimos en, en, la, en la oficina de Orion, ellos ofrecieron pagarnos, pero yo, así como ellos quisieron pagarnos, me hicieron sentir que me estaban regalando el dinero y ellos no me están regalando nada. Realmente me están pagando por un trabajo que yo hice. Gracias. 
Hello and good evening. Thank you for allowing us to return to the board. The motive as to why we are here is to ask what I can do for the company Orion to pay us our due wages or to who I can direct my words to. I would like to know as to why my old wages have not been resolved. I would like to know a date where they could pay us. I have let Orion know that the wages that they will pay, be paying me is for the product of my labor. They are the ones responsible for contracting the company Joe has who did not pay me. And they are the ones who have to respond to the wages that are due. In the last meeting with, we had with Orion, they made me feel as if they were giving me away their money and that is not the case. They're responding to a job that was, um, that was done to benefit McMurray Middle School. The company, Orion, in their opinion, is that they're giving away money to me. Well, that is not the case. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Head to Good evening, <coughs> Chair and Dr. Battle and members of the board. Um, so we're here again tonight because uh, we wanted to give you an updated give you updated information about um, how your contractor is behaving toward your workers. Last time that we were here was on December 10th, and before public comment time, Dr. Battle stated that she urged David Prophet to strongly encourage Orion to find a solution and assure that everyone who worked on their job site was paid appropriately. At the end of that meeting, Mr. Prophet stated that Orion Construction at this point in time is looking at alternative ways to make the issue resolved within a very short amount of time. The following Monday, on December 16th, Orion met with Armando and with wor Workers' Dignity. In that meeting, Armando, I'm sorry, in that meeting, Orion said that they were ready to pay Armando and RSA the $43,000 that they're owed, but that there's one more thing Armando would have to do first, sign a non-disclosure agreement. Orion showed Armando a non-disclosure agreement that contained some false statements and misleading language. Armando said that the paperwork would need to be changed before he would sign and offered different language. And Orion agreed to consider an alternative NDA, but refused to negotiate about the NDA's language at that meeting. Armando told Orion that he would work with Workers' Dignity to create a revised, accurate, non-disclosure agreement that he would be willing to sign. On Thursday, January 2nd, Armando and RSA received an email from Orion saying that they were withdrawing their offer of payment based on the signing of the non-disclosure agreement and that no future offers of payment will be made on their behalf. We're still seeking resolution we're so grateful for all the support that you've given us so far. And uh, we ask for your continued support going forward. Thank you for your time and thank you for all that you do for our schools. Thank you. Tiffany Aka. I have these for. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, Chair, members of the board, and Dr. Battle. I'm going to speak fast to get through this. My name is Tiffany Acuff, and my address is 812 North 5th Street, Nashville 37207. I attended my first Board of Education meeting in October of 2018. That night, I first learned about Nashville Passage, and I was shocked to learn that in 2017, of the 1,021 students pre-K to fourth grade who were suspended in metro schools, approximately 34% were students with disabilities. Now, I'm so thankful for the work that Passage and the board has done regarding elementary school suspensions, but that statistic stopped me in my tracks and I could not leave it alone. I had to know why and how this could happen. In my research, the most obvious and easily resolved contributing factors were two areas that I would like you to consider resolving tonight. The first, a lack of communication, and the second, a lack of training for school resource officers. The problems that I'm presenting to you come with vetted solutions. In July and August, I met with both Sergeant Jonathan Hathaway, Officer Reuben Dobson, and Executive Director of Exceptional Education Services, Deborah McAdams. During each of these meetings, they all expressed a desire for a cooperative partnership and a thrilled at the idea of SRO training, though none of them had actually met with each other before. I am requesting that the Board of Education budget $150 per semester, 300, oh wait, 
$300 annually for mandatory SRO training in partnership with the Exceptional Education Department and Autism Tennessee on intellectual and developmental disabilities. I have spoken with the Executive Director of Autism T Tennessee, who would willingly provide free training on Autism 101, as well as basics of behavior training. They would be also be willing to provide a license BCBA to address triggers and de-escalation at a cost of approximately $70 per hour. Officer Dobson and Sergeant Hathaway were more than willing to secure professional development dates towards this specific training, and department head Mrs. McAdams would like to attend it as well. Additionally, I identified a lack of knowledge among SROs regarding which students had IEP and 504 plans that might affect behaviors and thus require a modified approach. This is a problem about access to information, and I have a solution. The individual education plan in the 504 should include an optional template for parents to fill out for school resource officers, possibly even EL students as well. I have provided an example. This information could be kept in the admin office for SROs to review on a quarterly basis. Sergeant Hathaway was amazed at the simplicity of this solution and encouraged by the ability to keep his officers informed and equipped. In addition, I have requested that the Exceptional Education Department update the website to include these templates. They have agreed, and I am in dialogue with the communication department to make that happen. Finally, I am asking the Board of Education to legitimize both these templates and the training by budgeting and mandating them into existence by May 1st, 2020, so that we can begin the 2021 school year with these resolutions in effect. Thank you for your time. Thank you. John Little. Good evening, my name is John Little and I reside at 656 Rural Crest Avenue, Nashville, Tennessee, 37214 in um, Chair Anna Shepherd's district. And I'm here today, which I don't like doing this stuff, but I think is really important because I think it's an opportunity to be intentional about the change that we wanna see. Before we got up to speak today, you heard from kids who were reaching out as a cry for help you have heard from parents and you have also heard from teachers. And as we embark into this opportunity and you guys are gearing up to finalize the search criteria, I think you have a real opportunity to listen to the community as they speak to you and really incorporate the community's voice in your decision and not just incorporate their voice, but really have them at the table to make decisions. And I go back to Leadership Matters, and right now as we looked at our city, we watched our city go through three mayors in three years. And now as we transition over to the board, we're gearing up for an opportunity to continue to change leadership. Um, and as each of you sit there, and I know how much you care about kids and how much you love your own kids, but I think it's time to step back, like, as I really appreciate you guys are starting to get, come together more and be about the business of the kids. But I think really, it's really a time, it's time for a change to make sure that parents and students are at the table. Um, and as we look at it, as I sit there and listen to the Maplewood kids, like as we know, those kids attend a bottom 5% school, a priority school. They have said Dr. Griffin has been at their school, but in reality, those kids are still struggling. They had the courage to come up here today when their fellow classmates were speaking very positive about the school, they had to come up with a different narrative, a narrative that's very real for them and talk about the troubles that they have on a day-to-day -day basis. And even as you remember, the ambassador has talked about the challenges. And if you think about it, nine fights in one day, that's a very unsafe environment. And so my last plea is, as you think about this criteria, think as you step outside the box and think about how we have always done it in the past, and what are some of the things that we can do differently to make sure the community comes together. And again, leadership matters, and so you need to think about a leader that has the respect of parents, teachers, and administrators, and students, and, and they're able to bring them together, and this is a person that they're able to listen to and follow their lead. As board members, you guys have a unique experience to represent your communities, but if you ever watched the Power Rangers, they were all great individually, but when it came to big challenges, they all had to come together and go Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And so <laughs> I'm asking you guys today, um, before you finalize the search criteria, to come together as a board and to get behind a leader so they can have a great vision that changes our district. Thank you. Thank you. 
Tatiana Fairbanks. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everybody. Happy New Year. Um, my name is Deanna Fairbanks. I live at 714, 17, I know my address, guys. 1714 Seafreed Street, um, Nashville, Tennessee, zip code 37208. I'm the proud mom of two children uh, that attend Metro Public Schools. I have one um, at, at a charter school and one at a magnet. Um, I also substitute teach in Metro schools and have served in other capacities with, um, with some of the other schools in our district. Um, I'm also a member uh, of Nashville Propel. Um, with my experience working with our school system over the years, um, um, as, uh, as support and in different capacities. I can't tell you how often I've heard it stated that the schools need more parent involvement. Um, and the truth is that I haven't met a parent yet that doesn't want to be involved. Um, the truth is that opportunities that are available are not always made accessible. And they're not also not communicated clearly and far enough in advance for parents to make arrangements to be present at things. I've seen this happen on the school level, and now higher up, I've, I've witnessed it um, on the school board level with, in regards to the superintendent search. Um, the, there was um, a meeting that was held where uh, input was taken from parents. There were two meetings that were that was held, um, one in Antioch and one here in this very building um, on the same night, and the goal for that meeting was to get input from, um, from the community about what we want to see in a, super in, uh, in a superintendent. Um, but the communication about that was not sufficient. Um, the evening before, um, I got an automated one call. Um, there was no letter in the folder, you know, days in advance to let us know, give us a heads up or anything like that. It just so happens um, that as a group, we had the meeting on our radar, but the masses of families like had no idea. I asked people that I knew like, hey, did you guys get that one call? Did you hear about this? And, um, and they had no clue. Um, like I said, the meeting was, was held um, in two different locations on the same night here in this room. Um, there were about 24 people, um, like the first few rows that, that were filled, they weren't even filled up on one side of the room. And a majority, um, I say upwards of about 20 of those um, parents and grandparents are people that came with us. Um, so surely while we appreciate being heard, um, those few number of voices are, n are not enough and they're not an accurate representation of what the masses of parents and families want. Um, and a superintendent. Um, parent involvement is important and necessary, and that small window of time to be involved um, was not fair. Um, superintendents make big decisions that affect all of our children. Um, so to move through this process without considering enough of our voices is only going to continue to grow the gap between our school systems and parents that need to be working together for the good of our children. We need transparency and communication, and we need our voices heard. Thank you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> Sonia Thomas. Good evening. Uh, my name is Sonia Thomas. I'm also from Nashville Propel. Parents requiring our public education system to lead. Um, I live at 1836 Bell Arbor Drive. Uh, that's in District 3. I'm also here representing the parents who uh, do not live in affluent communities um, where having a quality education is a choice. Um, I'm also here to speak about the director of school search criteria. I'm concerned that it is not inclusive. There's one thing that I believe is that when parents are powerful, all children will reach their greatest potential. And as you vote on the criteria for their director of schools, Propel is asking that you ensure that all candidates have an understanding of the issues in the district and the commitment needed to lead the schools that need the most support. The next director of schools must come ready to throw out the lifeline to save our children and do what uh, no other director has done before. It is my hope that the next director of schools has a clear vision and ex experience in improving schools and leadership characteristics that, that will inspire the entire city and in order uh, to do so, there are three priorities that come to mind. The first priority includes putting together a team that has documented experience in making courageous and relentless decisions that will change our low-performing schools. Our children are hurting out here. The second priority should be to give parents more access to great quality school choices in every neighborhood so that their children are not stuck in low-performing schools. And the third priority is a commitment to including the voice of parents and families 
Instead of talking about the lack of parent engagement, um, he or she must exemplify engagement and commit to building relationships with parents. This is important because he or she must be able to relate to parents' innate sense to save their children and must be willing to listen to what parents care about. And I believe that these three priorities will be the beginning of progress. But I also want to challenge this board. If this board is serious about including parents in this process, Propel is committed to hosting a town hall that would um, and host at least 100 MNPS parents. Um, the goal would be to create a space where candidates can hear about the issues that are directly affect our children, and also we could have them present a work product that addresses an issue in our low performance schools. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Leslie Marquin. Hello, and good evening, everyone, and thank you for allowing us to be here today. I'm with um, Workers' Dignity. I'm here to speak about the ongoing issue that my friend Armando has been going through. In mid-December, the company Orion had agreed to pay him, but as Andrew said, under one condition, Armando was told to sign papers that stated a non-disclosure agreement with falsehoods that could open up Armando and others to lawsuits by Orion in the future, when in fact the money that he is owed is for doing a job for McMurray Middle School. With that being said, Armando did not sign the papers because the correct information was not included. Since then, the agreement has been withdrawn and Orion still needs to pay Armando for his labor, but are not cooperating to do so. We came here today to see if we could get our voices heard. I believe that as a community, we should help each other out as much as we can, and I do hope that happens. We cannot let Armando's injustice stay unresolved any longer. We need, it to, we need help bring this matter to an end. Thank you for your time, guys. Thank you. Jason Larkins. My name is Jason Larkins. I reside at 9025 Overlooked Boulevard in Brentwood, Tennessee. I'm here regarding the matter of McMurray Middle School and RSA Concrete. Orion Building Corporation would like to take this opportunity to provide an update on the matter regarding RSA Concrete. RSA's claim of non-payment at McMurray Middle School for work performed as the sub of a sub to Joe Haas Concrete. In regards to the claim, MMPS and Orion Corp Building Corporation have provided contractual documentation of full payment for all work to all parties contracted on the project. On December 16th, a free will offer of payment in the amount of $43,000 was made to RSA stipulated by them standing a, signing a standard non-disclosure agreement pertaining to the matter at McMurray Middle School. This offer was made as a goodwill gesture. RSA declined the offer. On January 2nd, 2020, Orion withdrew this offer as we have gone above and beyond to resolve the matter. Any contractual or le legal obligations have been met as of this time. Moving forward, if RSA seeks to use the Tennessee state lien laws against Joe Haas Concrete, which is the mechanism set in place to resolve these very situations, our firm will offer any documentation needed to assist in their efforts. However, unless there is a legal or bond claim against Orion Building Corporation, then there is nothing more that we can do or will offer. Over a 37 year history, this is the first time a vendor or third tier subcontractor have claimed non-payment against our firm. We are proud of that record. Our clients and contractors are part of what make our company a great place to work and to serve those in our community. It's our privilege to have worked with Metro Schools over the past several years, and we take pleasure in working with your staff and teachers. We also feel a sense of pride in helping build a shared community that we enjoy. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Alyssa Thera. Is Alyssa not here tonight? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that does conclude the portion of our agenda that uh, is for public participation. Uh, we will move on to uh, governance issues and our consent agenda. I don't have a consent agenda. 
Pardon me? The, what I want to talk about is not on the consent agenda. It's eight. It is on consent, isn't it not? Yeah. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, I'd like to pull um, item I um, and J off the consent agenda for discussion about adding um, a diversity clause. Okay, <coughs> all right. So, uh, Ms. Peter, uh, Ms. Player Peters has pulled off items number I and J from the consent agenda. Uh, we will not read the consent agenda in its full. You have a, an opportunity to do that. So, I will entertain a motion to uh, uh, um, uh, to uh, approve the consent agenda as uh, printed. I move that we approve the consent agenda number 1A through H as written. Okay. Second. Who put uh, Ms. Perry? Okay. All right. The motion has been um, moved to approve the consent agenda as presented and has been properly seconded. Is there any discussion on any of the remaining items? Okay, seeing no discussion, a show of hands to approve consent agenda is presented. Okay, any opposed? Thank you. Ms. Peter, Ms. Blair? Um, yes, right. uh, we, um, part of the process uh, of the consent agenda, uh, I know there was a missing point that I think we should um, elevate a part of the, um, the criteria in the search process and asking the TSBA in their search process to explicitly state our diversity demographics for our school district um, and the materials that was presented to us um, that it mentioned just a general makeup in the bio of um, characteristics of our school district regarding you know, number of students, um, the grades, things like that, but did not mention the ethnic or um, the racial makeup. And so I just want to be transparent to the candidates that apply that we have a very diverse um, school district. We want to celebrate that diversity and also very be inclusive um, and intentional in that and understanding that the makeup that we are not a monolithic um, demographic within our um, within the diversity of our students um, and our staff and make sure that's very explicit in our materials. So um, I would like for the TSBA to refer to the 2018-19 diversity report. And on the first page and the first paragraph, there's a perfect uh, description of the makeup um, of our diversity with our, um, as far as our ethnic and racial um, demographics. And that we can just put that in the material in a one or two sentence blur to make sure that's very transparent, that they know that what um, our, our district is made of and um, that we're transparent of what our um, community looks like and make sure that we recognize that within the um, candidates that um, apply to the job. If I could remind my colleagues, when we had our retreat last Friday, um, Tammy, uh, Dr. Grissom mentioned that if we, she had given us a copy of the brochure that she, had, that they had already created, and um, she said that any additions and or subtractions, any changes would have to be vetted upon by the board, and we, um, Miss. Um, Player Peters brought this to our attention, and I think it's a really good point that she makes. And that if you live it, breathe it every day, you know what our you know diversity makeup is. And we, you know, yes, it's a challenge, but yes, we also celebrate it. But someone from the outside of of MM, MMPS may not know, you know, what what we look like and how we work. So I think it's an important point that we do point that out to any potential candidates. Is, is there any? Other discussion or any comments around uh, this this mo this motion? No further discussion. Okay. Well, with a show of hands, I would like you to see. Motion. Yeah, oh, I didn't make a formal motion. Oh, okay. Did we? Oh, you didn't make a formal motion. I, yeah, okay. I talked about it. I realized I didn't okay. actually form Did you? it to a motion. So I think this to be legal and proper. Okay. Um, so I can make a motion that in the information that we present to the public and to the candidates for director of schools that we have um, a statement based on our diversity report. Um, that's an introduction paragraph that explicitly states the demographics of our district. Okay. Do, can we have a second? Second. Who did that? Everybody. Okay. <laughs> everybody. Oh, everybody seconded it, and that works for me. <laughs> okay. Chair Shepard, I think we need to consider these uh, separately. Okay. It's all right. So, all right. We can do that. So, we will vote on. Um, number I first, the uh, cr cr criteria, I believe that was on, don't quote me here, I, that was on a different page than the search process, but anyway, all in favor of, of number I with a show of hands, please raise your hands, okay, any opposed? Thank you. 
And so we'll move on to number J, which uh, is the procedures in the uh, director of search school search process. So uh, show of hands, all approved. Andy disapproved. Okay, he passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. We will move on then to board committee reports, Dr. Gentry. So earlier today, um, I had the opportunity to meet with Chris Henson and Mr. Profit and their teams uh, around our current ask. Um, and everyone should have a copy of that material that was reviewed um, in our meeting as well as in the subsequent committee meeting that took place here on the board floor. So um, just to sort of to summarize, we have a $401 million ask for capital needs. That includes some renovations, that includes um, f securing of land for the building of new schools, um, and a boatload of what we call <laughs> deferred maintenance, uh, which covers just some basic maintenance, uh, not even basic, some significant ma maintenance of our schools, um, transportation issues, the bus purchases, um, and technology upgrades as well. Uh, if you will recall, um, well, I'll say this, last year's ask was almost about half of that, but because we did not receive dollars, those uh, needs did not go away just because we didn't get the money. So they have rolled over uh, to this year's ask, and so that number has grown. Uh, in the past, we I think our last uh, disbursement was about $63 million, uh, but that also came with some clear indications of how we should spend that money. Um, so just saying all this to be prepared for a couple of things. Number one, if we don't get anywhere near the $401 million next year, this number will look even bigger um, because those things that did not get addressed will continue to roll over year after year. Um, the other thing, um, and we talked about this just a little bit, uh, is that we don't, um, we have to dip into our singular pot for routine maintenance as well as these large product projects. Uh, we don't, as other uh, metro government um, uh, entities, have a separate uh, kind of carved out portion of funds to do the routine things just to keep the lights on, just to keep things um, current and up to date for the benefit of our students and our teachers. Um, so yeah, so um, we will have our next meeting on the 28th at four o'clock. Uh, I've been asked to split some of that time with just the with the budget committee, so we this won't be anything new. So we will just give you some two weeks to sit with it. If you have any additional questions, please bring them to that meeting on the 28th. But the uh, team will be looking for us to approve this uh, report as presented for presentation to the council for approval. Thank you, Dr. Gentry. Okay. Seeing that there are no other uh, committee reports, we'll move on to announcements. Can we start with you, Ms. Perry? Yes, thank you. Dr. Battle, Ms. Griffin, it is a sad day to me when we have a teacher who appears to have organized her students to come in and speak negatively about a principal that you chose to work very, who is working very hard to change a school that is a difficult school to turn around. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm sad to see this, I'm disappointed, and I uh, just wanna start my announcements by saying that. Uh, I wanna thank Council Lady Tanya Hancock, who was appointed by the mayor to uh, work with teachers and organizations to help um, be sure that uh, the teachers receive the supplies that they need. Uh, one day we met at the uh, pencil box and um, um, pencil box LP and we looked at the supplies that uh, that the teachers or the request for supplies that the teachers needed, and many of them were already um, on loan and, and to give away to teachers, so that's a, st a step in the right direction. The Mayor's Night Out will be on February the 19th at six o'clock at Madison uh, Middle School. Our Teaching and Learning Committee meeting will be on uh, the 28th at three o'clock, 
and we will talk about the literacy plan of action for English language learners. Um, all literacy materials will be on display starting on Tuesday, a week from today, at the MNEA building. Uh, these are the materials being reviewed by our ELA selection committee, uh, and this invitation goes to everyone, uh, to teachers, to parents, to students, community members, and of course to board members. Uh, those hours and dates are January 21st, which is next Tuesday, through January the 31st, so a good 10 days there. And on Monday um, through Thursday, uh, MNEA will have these, the, the building will be open and the materials will be on display from 9 a.m. until 7 p.m. on Friday from 9 to 6 and on Saturday from 9 to 3. There will be a brief survey to provide feedback so that the committee members will uh, be able to hear from the folks who review the materials. Thank you for that information, David. Thank you. Lawyer Peters. Um, I know there's an issue going around the um, the payment issue with RSA and Orion and Jay Haas, and I hope we can continue working through the process. I know it's not an easy process or a difficult, I mean, a difficult process, but hopefully um, maybe through third party, uh, a neutral third party, we can help move the process along um, to find some type of resolution. Um, today I had a great pleasure uh, this morning of going to Glencliff Elementary and touring the school and what a great um, elementary school and then being in the middle of their, I know they're in the middle of their magnet um, grant and to see the innovative things that are going on in our neighborhood um, schools and it's becoming a magnet school. It was very um, uplifting um, and to see the wonderful children and starting at elementary school students to become entrepreneurs. Um, it's awesome, and the equipment they had that I had in high school, they had an elementary school, but the broadcast system is awesome because that's something I had in high school, and that's the fact that the kindergartens um, up to early elementary grades are starting that process so young where they become naturals and become secondhand and doing coding and learning how to start our own business, and their, their business focus this year um, is natural disasters, which is very apropos given what's going on in Australia and the forest fires and the storms that we're having that how to come with natural disaster kits and for elementary students to come up with that and how to make a business model, but then also be very um, uh, charitable and also giving that away. Um, th that is a great thing to instill early on that we're being very focused, that we're developing young children um, within our traditional school system that are doing great work and to set that mindset. I just want to uplift that. That's something that I'm um, literally less than a mile from my house that I didn't realize the awesome work, and not the awesome work they're doing, but even the level that they're doing it, that it should be uplifted. So um, thank you to Dr. Smart for who gave me the personal advice tours today. And um, that's a great thing that's going on in Glencliff Elementary. Thank you. Ms. Bush? Yes, um, I have two things. Um, as we all know that we, um, we've we had um, a little cloud over JFK uh, this past uh, year and uh, I've had the opportunity to work with the principal at JFK and um, Dr. Springer and we have collaborated and came up with a lot of great ideas to help support JFK. And um, we did do something very, very fun, uh, welcoming the kids for the new year. Uh, some of the staff came from central office, and we had our uh, we had our lays on, we had uh, our tiaras on, happy new year, we had our horns, and those students about passed out when they got off that bus to figure out what the, all these adults are doing by blowing these things at us, saying happy new year. But it was so exciting and welcoming and very warm um, that we got together, and that's just a start of trying to uh, move the needle uh, with JFK. Uh, we also passed out donuts, went to every uh, classroom, class uh, passed out donuts and coffee and water. Um, so it was really exciting that the students saw it, and of course the students were not happy that they didn't get donuts, and they wanted to know where's my donut, where, where's my stuff. So we're gonna be doing some great things uh, rolling out this, uh, this semester, um, we're going to help build their PTO, um, so they don't they have a board, but they uh, need more support on building their PTO because, as we know, parental involvement is the number one indication of making sure our children are getting the support they need um, in order for them to be successful. Um, so we're excited about the great things that are going to be happening over at JFK. Um, uh, the second thing I want you, uh, Mr. Prophet, I want you to know that I am so excited. I see your head. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> and you grew some things on me. I didn't know who you were. <laughs> it looks good on you. I want to tell you that. Um, I want to. I do appreciate your hard work um, for uh, this school, and we need it so badly. I know I throw a tantrum sometimes because I want to see it like that to happen. And I know financially it just takes a lot more money, but I do want to tell you how much I appreciate you for really working hard on it. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, I have to start out with some sad news tonight. Uh, Hillwood High School lost a beloved teacher, Steve Campbell, who passed away in December. He taught at Hillwood for over 20 years. Mr. Campbell was described as someone who always greeted everyone with an infectious smile. He was celebrated as an inspiration to all and a teacher who made a tremendous impact on both the students and on the community. I'd like to extend condolences to his family and express thanks for his decades of service and commitment to our children. Yesterday, I met with Steve Hinckley, who is the CEO of the Adventure Science Center. And I realized during my meeting that I was unaware of the many learning opportunities that are available through the Adventure Science Center. So I wanted to share what I learned so that our educators and students could take advantage of some of these opportunities. First, admission to the Adventure Science Center is free for all MNPS field trips. In addition to the planetarium and the many other great exhibits, the Adventure Science Center offers classroom laboratories that provide opportunities for science learning, including dissections, as well as opportunities for professional development for teachers. The Adventure Science Center is always already working with Dr. Jennifer Berry, director of the MNPS STEAM programs, to expand science learning opportunities for our students. Uh, they also provide free and discounted tickets for students whose family, families qualify, including homeless families, in an effort to give all children in our city a chance to explore science. There are plans underway to expand the Adventure Science Center, and I was most excited about a new music exhibit there that features interactive opportunities. Students can conduct the Nashville Symphony, they can play virtual instruments and even view MRIs that, shows what, that show what happens inside the mouth and throat of singers when they sing different types of music. I hope that we can continue to build partnerships like these to enhance the great programming already underway in MMPS. Ms. Pines. Yes, thank you. Um, the, I wanted to say thank you to the MNPS administration that's been supporting the textbook committee um, along with Councilwoman Hancock. And our next meeting will be this Wednesday, tomorrow, at John Early at 11. Um, the survey went out to teachers. I believe we'll be kind of reviewing that survey data and looking for uh, ways to make the recommendation to the mayor that does not cut down the other committee's recommendations. Because as we know, there's a 37208 committee and a metro committee that looks at pay. And we want to make sure that those council members are talking and collaborating and using um, similar data to really present a case about underfunding. Um, I also want to shout out the youth development work group that's been sparked by work with NASA. Um, if you've never heard of NASA, they just do great work in middle and high schools. They, they're, they're supportive of aftercare. So they embed literacy. They, they're, they're really just whole child everything. Um, but I, I think the idea that we're trying to move out of our silos and work together, like have different nonprofits, different organizations, collaborating so that we use similar funding, um, similar standards, that we're just working together and being efficient is going to be beneficial to all of our students. I also would like to let you know that the 37208 committee uh, will have a listening session this Saturday from 12 to, I'm sorry, not this Saturday, Saturday, um, January 25th at Jefferson Street Baptist Church from 12 to 1. Um, that committee has met several times and is working to kind of finalize this recommendation. Uh, on that same day, the Bordeaux North Nashville PTO Association will have a BEP pre presentation at the Bordeaux Library from 11 to 1.30. They'll have Representative John Ray Clemens, Senator Dickerson, and myself will be there to kind of talk through the BEP. I'm, I'm just kind of there for decoration because I'm just, I don't, I don't have to influence the state much. So I'll just be there in case parents have questions. But I think this is a great presentation that was developed from parents and the idea that they are incorporating legislators and making sure that they understand what we say when we say we're underfunded, I think is just such a powerful statement, a powerful movement. And I would just encourage everyone to either come out or send someone that does not know about the, or does not feel comfortable with the budget process to this presentation. On that same day, because all this is happening on January 25th, Inglewood Elementary School will be celebrating its 90th birthday. Oh. That's an old school, and I am so excited about it, but that's an old school building that we need to 
be supporting in different ways. We'll talk about that later. But Inglewood is doing really good work, and um, they, they've had that infusion of dollars from the STEAM grant, and it's just always good to see what those students and those teachers are doing. So please, on January 25th, if you don't have anything to do, come visit us at the 37208 meeting from 12 to 1 at Jefferson Street Baptist. Come visit us from 1030 to 1 at Inglewood Elementary for their 90th, 90th year celebration. And then come see us at Bordeaux Library from 11 to 1.30 to hear about the BEP. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ms. Pooper Walker. So I want to um, take a minute to just talk about an incredible program that's happening this week. Uh, on Thursday, um, we have nine MNPS high schools that will be participating in the Hamilton Education Program. So I saw Hamilton on Sunday night, and I uh, Ms. Shepard saw it as well. It's an incredibly powerful uh, musical. So we have nine schools participating in 800 Kids Going on Thursday to see Hamilton, but also participating in activities, and there's also classroom um, curriculum and social studies classes. This is, uh, I want to give a shout out to Pencil Foundation for helping arrange, helping arrange transportation, to TPAC for hosting our students, um, to the Gilder Lerman Institute who partnered with Hamilton to bring Hamilton Education Program. It's, Nashville's only one of 10 cities in the entire country doing the Hamilton Education Program. There are six students from six states and 38 schools coming to the Nashville performance. So we're hosting lots of other folks. So I wanted to just give a shout out for that. I think it's really important that our kids are getting to see such a powerful production. Um, and I also want to note that um, we have our Hillsborough High School students who've been working on a journalism project with CBS. We'll have their literacy project airing at the end of the month and we'll be on talk of the town. So that journalism program is thriving. And then the other thing I'll say, our budget and finance committee, I will have a timeline to you guys for what looks like the duration of the um, budget season with um, Dr. Severe and I working on arranging with you guys some quadrant meetings to s like we did last year so the community can hear about the budget and get, get some feedback and so stay tuned on that. Thanks. Yeah, right. Thank you. So uh, first on the note of parent uh, involvement, I want to make sure that everyone knows in District 2 or the Overton cluster that on January the 27th from 6 to 7 p.m. when then Croft Middle School's uh, library, there will be the uh, Overton PAC, which stands for the Parent uh, Action Council. And so you are more than welcome to attend, even if you are not considered a member, if that's what you would like to not say that you are. You're still welcome to come and understand more about within your cluster, not just what's going on within your school, but then the whole cluster. So what's going on within your elementary schools, your middle schools, and then into your high school so that you can be more involved. So I want to make sure that you're aware of that. Additionally, report cards go out tomorrow. So so please Ooh. note that. Um, I would like to thank, <laughs> whether that's good or bad, um, I would like to thank uh, Tanera, McKenzie, and Tiffany for coming out and speaking to us on behalf of students with different or varying abilities. And then uh, lastly, I want to state, I just want to make sure we're all clear that um, your schools have not received any capital funds since 2018, and that is going to put a strain on us, not only on new builds or potential new builds, but also just the constant maintenance that we have on our buildings. Our buildings, on average, are about 50 years old. So make sure that you are aware of that so that you can advocate not just for your school, but for all of our schools and all of our students and the buildings that they need to learn in. They need to be creative and innovative spaces so that they are welcoming for all. Um, and so on that note, I want to make sure that we have a, a clear understanding. We are not a part of what um, Dr. Gentry mentioned um, of that group where we have kind of a different ability to tap into funds to take care of things like putting roofs on and that kind of stuff, not because of our school structure, but because of the structure that we're under through the Nashville Charter. So once again, we only have one fund that we're able to pull from, and I want to make sure that everyone's aware that we really would like that to be funded, and it's important for us to all know so that we can all take care of our schools. Thank you. Dr. Gentry. Hey, so I um, just want to welcome our new, new, another new interim principal at uh, Robert Churchwell, um, Kendra Chapman. Uh, so I look forward to meeting her. I think she starts on the 15th. Mm -hmm. Yes, tomorrow. Yes, starts tomorrow. Um, so uh, a couple of things just popped in as everybody was talking. Number one was um, I'd like to um, just request some sort of a presentation. I think over the break, we may have received three or four text messages of suicides um, among our young students in the district. Just an update on how we're addressing, how we're supporting, uh, what are we doing um, in that space in our schools. So I guess that would fall under SEL, but I would appreciate that. Um, on Monday is MLK Day, so I hope that everyone is planning to participate, celebrate, honor, and recognize in some way. Um, all over the internet you can find activities, and we don't see a lot of young kids 
Um, but uh, just Google it, um, MLK Day Convocation Activities for Youth. Um, there's a long agenda. I know people have posted them all over Facebook, flyers, copies of that flyer. Um, but as usual, there will be the meeting at uh, outside of Jefferson uh, Street Baptist Church, um, the big stage set up. Um, several of us often are on stage and give greetings and welcomes, uh, welcome about that day. And then we march to Tennessee State University's Gentry Center for the convocation and the speaker for that day. Um, so please, if your schedule will allow, please make it happen. Um, so kind of trying to put a tie that together with my next statement about the Nashville Charter uh, and public education in this city. Uh, if you're familiar with the history, um, how we're funded, um, there's not a big leap where you don't have to imagine uh, why we have the challenges when you look at the diverse population that we're serving and uh, how we got to be a desegregated um, uh, um, school system and then now we're supposed to be an integrated school system and that was not necessarily celebrated um, by everybody. And so um, sometimes I have to wonder uh, whether we're still being called to task uh, for the audacity of wanting equitable and equal education for all the students here in this city. And if you look at our charter, you look at some of the legislation that is coming down the pike, legislation that we discussed er earlier that's been approved, the students who are gonna suffer, the families that are gonna suffer, are the families that are living in 37208, it's the families that are living in poverty, it's the, it's the family that are, are, are looking to this opportunity for public, free public education, quality, pre free, free public education to change the trajectory of their kids' lives. And so we've got to stay vigilant, guys. We've got to stay vigilant. We've got to stay focused on what's uh, behind, not just what you see, but what's behind. Because when one piece of legislation fails, we don't blink before another piece comes right behind it to continue to provide challenges for us to be able to do what's right for our kids and the families that we serve. I have a few announcements myself. Over the holidays, I was pleased to see that Nashvillians answered the cry to help our staff and uh, to help staff our teachers' classrooms. Initially, there were 268 teachers on the list that was whittled down to eight and subsequently whittled down to zero. So Nashvillians answered the call to help staff teachers' classrooms. At the same time, I was seeing through social media that several MMPS families were getting robocalls I assume from central office reminding them how much they owed on their meals charged at school. I understand four such calls went out and I find that very um, offensive. Uh, first of all, these calls were made th during the holidays when tensions can already be high due to families not having enough money for Christmas and for uh, food. Secondly, I find this offensive because we are shaming our students and our families because their students dare to eat a hot meal at school. Over the weekend, I was um, told that Representative John Ray Clemens is sponsoring a bill this session, HB 1589, which is entitled the Tennessee Anti-Lunch Shaming Act, third year for him to sponsor this bill. This bill was, will initially be signed to each member of the Tennessee um, House Education Committee and thanked him for that and told him of, of, you know, my pending announcements. Here's my challenge I want to extend. I would like to see a list of lunch charges outstanding for each MMPS school. No family names, just school names. When we have that list published, I would like to challenge Nash Billions to rise to the challenge to pay off the student lunch charges at each particular school. I had a lot of people take an immediate interest in that. I had one woman who immediately reached out to me and said that her school, her church raised $2,000 in change to pay uh, lunch charges at a middle school in her community. So I think that Nash Billions are, are, we are there to help pay these lunch charges. I'll be the first one in line to say, sign me up. I'll pay off lunch charges at, you know, whatever school, you know, you know, probably within my district that needs the most help. 
I would like for us, I would, I'm asking Dr. Battle and her staff to, you know, get me a list of those schools, what those lunch charges are. We can put them on our website. We can put them in social media. We can ask the community to write a check to the school, not just central office and not to Anna Shepard for sure, uh, to, to the school because if, the, if they go unpaid, the school has to come up with the money to pay for them. It comes out of their discretionary funds, and we know that that's a very, you know, there's not a lot of discretionary funds in, in any school in MMPS. So I would like to challenge the experience to rise to the second challenge and help pay um, these student charges so these children can eat. Hungry children do not learn. That's a fact. So we need to help our families be able to have their students eat a hot lunch without the shame of um, having a, a student lunch charge. Sorry, that's my soapbox. On a happier note, uh, we held our board retreat, our winter retreat last Friday. I thought it was a very productive retreat and I was happy to be back in the middle of things. We spent the morning reviewing our strategic plan. It's been four years since we re reviewed that plan. And so we did a deep dive into about half of it. And so I have asked that we use a work session to go through the second half of it. It was a long overdue deep dive uh, we had a working lunch with Dr. Tammy Grissom from TSBA, which uh, she reviewed an entire document with us, and tonight we voted on the process and the criteria for our permanent director of school search. In the afternoon, we spent most of the time speaking about our upcoming budget process and identifying our budget priorities. It will be a very intense budget season as Mayor Cooper has moved everything up by 30 days. Having said that, I'm, I am confident that we as a board can identify our priorities and translate that into a budget that we can take to the mayor and council to request funding for our school district and basically our students. Okay, on this last note, I have to show you I'm wearing my LSU. <laughs> Save the best for last in case you missed the game of the year last Woo! night. Tigers beat Clemson by a score of 42 to 25. Everything I saw said Clemson was going to win. Why? Why did they say Clemson was going to win? Because they had strength of schedule. Give me a break. They're an ACC school. Have you not ever gone to an SEC game on Saturday night? So I want to say congratulations to the um, to the LSU Tigers. They did a great job. Good luck to quarterback Joe Burrows. He goes into the draft. Um, we wish him the very best. Coach O has proved all of his naysayers wrong. So congrats, LSU. Great night last night. And I did stay up until the very end of the ball game. So anyway, that being said, and this meeting back. is adjourned. <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Bell. <laughs>